So, ultimately, um, when we start treatment largely depends on guidelines, and but guidelines are there to direct um, both the healthcare professional and the um, and the um, um, patient. The beauty about HIV medicine is that it's it's not just the physician directing the patient; it's generally a joint discussion. So the patient. The patient's decision on whether to start treatment also comes into it, other factors that come to play as well. It's not just about the doctor telling the patient that he needs to start treatment. Um, the national guidelines still um, dictate or tell us that, you should, that, that we should be starting patients below a CD4 count of 350. Um, because it is at the CD4 count, anything below the CD4 count, the patient is at risk of developing um, infections due to a weakened immune system. But on the whole, starting treatment, as long as you have access to good drugs, is a good thing rather than having to wait. So if there was a debate about whether you should start treatment at whatever CD4 count, I would always favor starting treatment, provided that you have access to good drugs with very minimal side effects. So the drugs, the first line, um, antiretroviral combination drugs that we use are generally um, those that are recommended by the World Health Organization. So we are moving towards um, a tenofovir based um, regimen um, which is, is, is associated with less side effects of the fat loss and um, side effects that, that have an effect on the lipids. Uh, or the fats in the blood. So I mean, we're moving towards a tenofovir-based combination. Now, Combivir, which is a combination of one of the oldest HIV drugs, Zidovudine and Lamivudine, is also still widely used. Um, but that is for largely because of reasons of cost. Most tertiary hospitals are able to provide it for free um, to patients. Stavudine is um, a drug which was used until very, very recently. We, are, we still have very, very small numbers, but that is gradually being phased out. Um, the, the partner drug that we often use with either Combivir or Tenofovir-based combinations is Efavirenz, which is a non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor. I won't get too technical into it. I think the idea is that we use three drugs. They're often in core formulated combinations. So patients currently take about two pills a day um, and once a day. So, so Wifavirenz is a, uh, a HIV drug called a non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase. And invariably, most patients will get side effects, which are central nervous system side effects, such as uh, uh, vivid dreams, so dreams which feel very real, um, dizziness, they may experience headaches, um, some experience nightmares even, and um, uh, about less than 5% may get a rash with it. But the problem with the central nervous system side effects is that, yes, they may be, um, they'll, they'll be there for the first two weeks, but after the first two weeks, generally it does not become a problem. So either patients become, build up a tolerance to that, or they don't, or the side effects completely um, um, get very much less than what they were when, you f when, first, when they first started. Patients need to know that. So patients need to know that they will almost invariably get some of those side effects. It will not last for very long. And after two, the first two weeks, they should not be experiencing it very much anymore. And those that do, then maybe after a period of about three or six months may consider treatment switch. But we surprisingly do not find many numbers of patients who are unable to tolerate those side effects. Eating um, your HIV drug which contains efavirenz on an empty stomach often helps um, because food increases the levels of efavirenz in the blood so and thereby increasing the side effects. So certainly eating it on an empty stomach or away from um, the, from dinner time often helps. I often tell patients to take it about uh, half an hour to an hour before they go to bed. So, you know, they take their medication and if they do experience any drowsiness after that, then, then off to bed they go. So they're kind of using it like a sleeping tablet. Patients often don't have a, any worries about um, the side effects and often um, as long as they go to sleep after that, it doesn't really become an issue.